Hello again, Guardians, and welcome back to the channel for another Destiny 2 episode. Before we get started, every single week, I like to do a giveaway for every single one of you that have subscribed to my channel. And I'm also giving away three copies of Destiny 2 a week before the launch of Destiny 2. If that may interest you, details on the screen now. Simply pause the video, read the instructions, and enter in for the giveaways. Hint, hint, easiest way to enter, be subscribed, like this video, and leave comments down below. Thank you all so much for the support. Let's begin the video. Welcome Guardians! Today's video is detailing IGN video footage of a new Crucible map known as Vostok. And many of you probably already noticed it looks very familiar. That's because it's the Fell Winter's Peak. The same spot where we faced the first story mission of Rise of Iron's expansion for Destiny 1. The same spot where we talked to Ephrodite to get bounties for the Iron Banner and we get to purchase Iron Banner armor and weapons. And also the same spot where we get to jump over the giant Iron Temple Gate with the Eisenfire token from the Wrath of the Machine raid to go over and explore that exact location even when Iron Banner isn't open. So, the map itself in a whole, how does it look? Well, basically you can explore it right now. The map looks virtually the same except for a couple of closed off doors in Destiny 1 where you can't explore certain buildings and locations, but ultimately from the footage, it's basically the exact same map. You can kind of go around and think of strategies right now before even jumping into Destiny 2. And that's pretty unique, something that we're not really used to. Moving into this though, I'd like to put a couple of statements out there. Having Vostok as a map is something I've wanted in Destiny for quite some time, and I'm happy they're actually reusing the space to put into D2, because I felt like that area would have been a really good crucible map nonetheless. The two giant buildings that can be used as sniper towers, one sniper tower was added, and the old one, the really tall building that we used to walk by, is pretty unique. Now the main spot where all the action is going to happen is going to be the B flag in the main point in the center of the map. Alongside that, over at the gondola, it kind of looks pretty unique, but the gondola is going to basically be the exact same as it is right now in Destiny 1 and it's going to be open to a bunch of fire and you can't really have very much cover in that location. That will be C flag. A flag will be over by Ephrodite inside of the building and that building will be open to all directions. So the doors that were closed off are actually open and now it's a full circle and there's like six different ways to get inside there. So be careful. It's open to fire from sniper rifles, shotgun rushers, shoulder chargers, and all of that crazy stuff. Moving in, we've also got caves throughout the map linking you to every single spot on the map. That cave system isn't available in Destiny 1 to explore, but it is there for Destiny 2, something that they decided to add. If you want to see more features on the cave system and the different routes and locations, I would definitely check out the link in the description of the video to IGN's original post. Thank you all so much and support IGN because they're the ones they gave me this video footage. Moving in from the shoulder charge comment that I made earlier, shoulder charge is not going to kill one shot. Actually, it's been nerfed down quite a bit. In the video footage, it doesn't even take down the complete shield of the opposing guardian, which is pretty insane. Now, a lot of you will also be kind of wondering if it takes up melee charge, and it does. Shoulder charging, if you do hit a guardian, it will take up your melee charge. If you don't hit a Guardian, you will not use up your melee charge and you can actually use it for fast traveling. But ultimately, if you do hit someone with the shoulder charge, it does remove the melee. Something really important to take note of. Also, another thing is the Sentinel has a void wall grenade, which I thought was pretty interesting. And speaking of grenades, the Titan also was able to throw two grenades. Now, I'm kind of thinking it's kind of like another exotic, like the armamentarium chest piece, but we're not too sure. It might even be a perk inside of the actual Striker Titan subclass where you can get two grenades now. But ultimately, this trip mine style lightning grenade is pretty unique, and he had two of them, so I can't wait to figure out how to get two of those grenades because that'd be really cool. 
Moving in, we've also got a shotgun that showed off some precision damage. We haven't had precision damage come from a normal ordinary shotgun in Destiny 1 from Year 1 Destiny. So I'm really excited to see that happen in Destiny 2 because shotguns are now heavy weapons and I'm completely fine with it. Having precision damage is going to make them a more viable option for your heavy weapon or your power weapon and I can't wait to use them. Again, moving in, we've also got Warlocks. Warlocks can glide while shooting, and that's without a fancy Angel of Light perk. You can actually glide through the air while shooting, and you can stay up in the air for a significant amount of time. And that gliding and shooting is something that wasn't really captivated in Destiny 1, and it was a problem for most Warlocks. Not being able to shoot while you were gliding was an issue because it wasn't stable, and when you did try to aim, it wouldn't work and you would just keep falling to the ground but the Warlock's fall is so slow that you couldn't protect yourself. And that was also a problem for sniper rifle users or people that were really good shots with a hand cannon or a sidearm or a scout rifle or a pulse rifle. Yeah, I died a lot when my Warlock in the air. So that was a big problem for me. But this might actually correct that. Being able to aim in the air and actually do some maneuvers in the air with my gun, I feel a bit more safe running a Warlock. Again... Hashtag Warlock Master Race. Hashtag Warlock Master Race. And that's basically it for the video footage, Guardians. That's all that we really got to pick up from IGN's video footage. I hope you guys check out the links in the description for all three videos so you can go and watch their stuff in a little bit more detail. You'll actually be able to see how everything was running and working. You'll get to see the entire walkthrough and tour of the map known as Vostok, which is Fellwinter's Peak really excited about that but ultimately again i'll throw out an opinion i like the idea that fell winter's peak is being reused and thrown in as a crucible map because i felt like that was a viable option back in d1 but it never happened and thank god it still looks the same thank you bungie you did something right now it's time guardians i have to throw a huge shout out to my patrons for supporting this channel and being a patron on patreon if you guys want to go and check out the Patreon page, it's linked in the description of this video alongside all of the other stuff that I've linked. If you want to go and check out all of my social medias, that's all linked down below as well. I do giveaways on Twitter and Instagram, so if you want to check that out, that is also down below. But as always, perfect time to subscribe for Daily Destiny 1 and Destiny 2 content. And again, as always, stay violent and be privileged. Oh, hi. APG isn't here right now, but I guess you enjoyed the content. So over there is the logo you can click on. That will allow you to subscribe. More content up there. And behind the scenes daily content over here on the vlog channel. There you go. Enjoy.